All righty. Welcome. This is going to be our first ever cryptocurrency podcast episode. And so I have my friend here, Jake. And for those of you guys that don't know Jake, Jake and I are actually friends. We actually went to college together. We actually traded a lot in college. We're always talking about stocks at parties. Uh, it was just a really good time. And uh, Jake is actually a cryptocurrency expert. I am not an expert when it comes to crypto. I'm a chartered market technician. I know about analyzing stocks and analyzing trends and portfolio management, but I don't know much about cryptocurrency. And uh, Jake here is really well versed. I remember Jake, you always like send me texts of the cryptos that you're in and you're just up a crap ton. You're like buying these beautiful breakouts, buying the dips. Uh, it, you were on top of AMD, I remember many years ago. You're calling it when it was back at $26 a share. So not just cryptocurrency, but also stocks. So you've got a good idea about technicals, but you know a lot more about the fundamental side of things. So if you're listening to yeah. this, welcome, Jake. Jake, how's it going? For those, for doing... those that don't know you, Jake, uh, tell, tell them about yourself. So my name is Jake. Um, I went to Hamlin University and also was looking at neuroscience, psychology, and specifically trying to go into medicine. But I realized that I wanted to do business. I wanted to be involved with business. So I left that path. Um, and for the last two years, I've been teaching myself not only software development, but also learning about business, how businesses are formed and made and how you run them effectively, as well as just generally speaking, been keeping up with crypto, keeping up with my personal finances and overall just been kind of relaxing and living my life. Hell yeah. That's awesome. All right. So I want to get right into it then. So there's a lot of people that say that cryptocurrencies are worthless. Like Peter Schiff says, Bitcoin's going to zero and it's a non-productive asset. Like, what do you have to say for like the value of crypto? What do you have to say to the naysayers of crypto? What first comes to mind? So I would say overall that one of the like main conceptions about money is that it's this like overall valuable thing that across a population we decide has value. Well, mm -hmm. we've seen that cryptocurrency as a whole has had value and it's consistently had value. Mm -hmm. So the first like overall point that I would say to people is that if people around you or the general population being a lot of the financial industries right now on top of everyday people are looking at cryptocurrencies as a store of investment and or a speculative investment, mm -hmm. then it might be something that you want to look at. Yeah. Secondarily, I would say that while Bitcoin's still relatively new and the idea of these blockchains are still relatively new mm -hmm. um, in the grand scheme of things, I would say overall <clears throat> that these technologies are being fleshed out and being used properly now within the last few years rather than what they were, I would say, in the previous cycle. Okay. So if you're looking at meme coins, if you're looking at these things that overall really shouldn't have value, in my opinion, but they do. Yeah. and. I can see why they have value. If you're looking at these things like meme coins, like Doge, yeah. like Pepe, <laughs> um, like all these dog coins, for example, Shiba. I would say that <laughs> you have correct grounds to stand and be like, well, this is just speculation. This this has no value. Yeah, but greater if pool you look... theory, they just want to buy high and sell higher to the next person. Exactly. Of course, it's it's pretty much a Ponzi scheme in, in <laughs> essence. It's oh what what projects can garner the most hype on social media, which people can, or what projects can actually get people buying it. Yeah. Um, as far as, sorry, as far as value goes within these networks, what we can see is that these companies like Amazon, like Google, like Microsoft are doing the exact same thing that these blockchain networks are trying to do. There are plenty of compute networks that are specifically involved in trying to get rid of things like AWS or replace AWS or be a competitor to the Amazon web services. Um, so deploying websites, being able to filter data, being able to look at data or price oracles, which is just basically like if you took a stock value, you'd be able to go to, let's just say um, Chainlink, that's the most well-known oracle. Yeah. And you'd be able to get that price at that instant from, cha from the uh, Chainlink oracles and then you'd be able to make trades on that algorithmically, for example. That's just one way that uh, oracles are used. So these networks have different like ways to actually add value to the overall, I, I should say, to the overall cryptocurrency 
um, market. It's like I would say that kind of like right. Yeah, now. I would I would say to me, I treat cryptocurrency more like small cap tech stocks than I do as a cryptocurrency. I just see okay. it as a different way to almost garner investment from the public rather than going through traditional stock exchange means. Um, and I treat them as such. They are risky investments, mm -hmm. yet I still do look at a lot of my projects and say, like, there's a lot less risk in these than I would say is in traditional stocks because yeah. the cryptos I like to pick have real world use cases. They are being used by businesses or other blockchains that are being used by businesses yeah. and or have expandability within, uh, within their protocol built in. Um, oh my gosh, that sounds good to me. <laughs> but yeah. Well, let's get into it then. Like, what are some of your favorite like altcoins or cryptocurrencies? I can pull up a chart too and do some technical analysis on it. And as I'm doing yeah, that, you can kind of talk about the use cases, why you like the altcoin or the cryptocurrency. And yeah, I think it would be very valuable for the audience. So I like to break down my crypto investments as of right now into like five main kind of categories. And I think okay. these, in my opinion, are, I don't want to say safe investments because I'm not a financial yeah. asset manager in any capacity. The only and you know, you, you can only lose what you put in and exactly. you can always use stop losses. You can use price levels. You, you want to use position size management, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Of course. And cryptocurrency is a 24 yeah. seven uh, market. So it's never good in my opinion to just throw all your money in one basket all at once. You're better no. off dollar cost averaging. And just yeah. finding projects that you want to stick in for a while and you could see valuation or their valuation being much much higher um Definitely. sorry as for the like categories that i like to group my cryptos in i like to look at cryptos um specifically with business case business use case in mind Makes sense. so the cryptos that i like to look at are going to be right now data feeds and oracles okay. ai and compute networks okay. so that includes like ai uh, models that are being run across like GPU networks. I like that. Um, DeFi and DPIN, which is, excuse me for a second while I go, but it's decentralized physical infrastructure. Okay. So it's basically cryptocurrencies that are replacing things like, um, or providing financial services, including like lending, borrowing, trading, um, without like normal financial intermediaries. Um, yeah, as we well as the banks these getting involved, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the banks can't We're... be printing money, kind of like with cryptocurrency. There's a fixed supply, right? So yep. the banks just can't print money, or the Federal Reserve can't print money and devalue these cryptocurrencies, right? Yeah, exactly. That's another one of the big things that I look for in cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. is if they have an infinite supply, or they have a supply that could be inflated a lot. I do not invest in those projects no matter how promising they are mm. because i will not mess around with inflation it's literally betting against the fact that you can grow faster than you can actually print those coins that's so i don't i don't right like there. to that's get a good involved tip for those of you guys that are listening that's good i tend to stick to coins that have relatively small circulating supplies under a billion okay although i don't always follow that rule yeah there are plenty of coins that I would love to invest in that are above a billion circulating supply or total supply. Um, to get back to the categories, sorry. No, no, it's Data all feeds and oracles, AI and compute networks, yeah. DeFi and DPIN, real world tokenization or real world assets. So including what are kind of bringing in what the financial industries are trying to do right now. So BlackRock CEO trying to bring real world assets on chain and digitalize or tokenize everything. And then my last one is going to be security or intelligence. And that revolves around just fraud, scam. I like, um, like cybersecurity kind of, but for crypto yeah. land. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. I love it. Well, what do you have any like specific names that come to mind? Like what are maybe like some of your like larger positions, if you don't mind sharing? Because I like to just conduct some technical analysis. Maybe we can find some buy points. And again, none of this is financial advice. We're just showing you what we're doing. We're, you know, analyzing some charts and, you know, as always manage your risk, but this is interesting stuff. Of course. And I have a really, really unique like view on cryptocurrency. I would yeah. say that overall, most people aren't going to want to follow in my footsteps. 
I have That's a really awesome. like built out um, almost like business or business centered crypto view where I really want them to be like businesses. I want to see the teams. I want to see them have previous work experience. I want them to be docs. We got to get shit done. Um, yeah. Those yeah. I, I want to know their tech like, you know, shit. <laughs> I, I want to see they're a, a real techno like technological asset. Yeah. Um, to start with cryptos, I guess we can look at um, we'll start with data feeds and oracles, because I think yeah. that's what if you're going to invest in cryptocurrency and you don't know a whole lot about it or you're just stepping foot kind of into crypto besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, I think data feeds and oracles are going to be one of the easier things to understand and they're going to be one of the quote unquote safer things in the long term. Um, I mean, there are people that are saying that Chainlink could surpass Ethereum as an altcoin just because oh, wow. be without, without these data oracles, you don't have access to information on the blockchain so it really is important to have these data feeds and oracles um, so you said chain link is that what's the ticker symbol for that is that chain it'll be link l-i-n-k link, that's right. link link and then for the crypto i'm gonna look at coinbase spot crypto is that is that cool yeah all right i'm gonna share my screen so you can see my screen And then I'm just going to pull this over our faces. All right. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Link. Do you see it? It is loading up. There we go. What's up? We're all good now. I got it. You're good. Okay, sweet. Okay. So chain link. So this is the potentially the coin that could surpass Ethereum. So let's just kind of do like a top down analysis. This is the monthly chart. And so far the monthly time frame looks really good. You know, you got some breakouts over here you know you got some consolidations down here a breakout another consolidation a breakout a little bit of a a, a breakdown from this like 1760 but that's fine because it consolidated formed a little bit of a base and then it's starting to go up so this is pretty cool i like this this is a bullish chart formation anything above you know ten dollars could be a you know 932 could be a potential dip buy or if you want to buy like a breakout, you could maybe buy something like over like, you know, 22 and that's on the monthly time frame. or you could let it go sideways for a bit and then break out. Do you, um, do you have any ideas when it comes to like the having, um, Jake, you know, like so, the, the Bitcoin having how that might affect the cryptocurrency market? So in my opinion, the Bitcoin having is it's not something that like people should look at with a set date and be like, oh, when this having happens, or if in the case of like previous Ethereum havings, when we were on proof of work as like, oh, something is going to happen. There will be price action on this day. There probably will be. But overall, I would say it's just a bullish sentiment for Bitcoin and for the crypto market as a whole. As long as Bitcoin is uh, in an uptrend, the rest of the crypto market seems to be in an uptrend and it seems yeah. to be the leader. So I, I would say that agree. it's a and I think um, it's, it's really important to even take a look at Bitcoin as well, just to do a little bit of a breakdown on Bitcoin, because um, analyzing Bitcoin is kind of like analyzing the S&P 500 for stocks. But if you analyze Bitcoin, it's kind of like you're analyzing the S&P 500 for cryptos and Bitcoin, you know, beautiful, beautiful move, all time highs, nothing bearish really about all time highs. Um, what I do have down here is what's called the money flow index. And basically, this is just an RSI with the equation multiplying volume into it. So it's like an RSI, but it takes account volume. And so far, this is not, it's not bearish. It's not like super bullish. But look, we got rising volume on the monthly green candles. That's confirming the uptrend. We're a little bit overbought, you know, on this latest move. We've went up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. So, you know, it's very normal to pull back even for one to three months. But Bitcoin's in a very strong uptrend, even as long as it's above 15,000. If we zoom in a little bit more, though, into like a daily chart, you know, I like I, I would say like 52,000 is a potential great dip buy for Bitcoin long term. And of course, something like 43,000. And I would say as long as Bitcoin's really holding, I would say above 38,000. That's kind of like our latest important pivot low. The long term view for cryptocurrency looks really good. So 
Bitcoin looks great. Especially with the current market sentiment around BlackRock and Coinbase working together, I would say that Bitcoin is in a really, really good spot with how bullish the CEO of BlackRock is on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, I think we're seeing like a big leap towards the financial industries publicly coming out and saying like that crypto is something that is going to stick around. Um, obviously, that could change in an instant. Yeah. But I you do get regulated uh, or something like that. But exactly. Yeah. Like, like for me, like cryptocurrency, it's like 2% of my overall portfolio. If you really like cryptocurrency, maybe you make it like 5 or 10%. If you don't like cryptocurrency at all, maybe make it zero. But that's just the way that I'm allocated towards it. And I just own, I don't even, I don't own too much of like actual Bitcoin, but I own ETFs that hold Bitcoin. I know it kind of defeats the purpose, but I'm a, I'm a big stock guy. And so I like BITO, it pays dividends as I hold on to Bitcoin. So yeah, I mean, just, just know your risk tolerance, know where you stand and allocate appropriately. So we exactly. have, yeah, yeah. So we yeah, have yeah. Link, we got Bitcoin. What else is on your mind, Jake? So I'm going to look at some lower cap price oracles, the okay. ones that I think have great developer experience. And this is coming from somebody that has spent not, I would say extensive time, but a good amount of time looking through their software development kits and looking through like how easy it is to deploy, how easy it is to use. And overall, like are the like development teams active within the ecosystem? Mm -hmm. um, and one really good example of that, that I think is going to be something um, in a similar uh vein as Chainlink is going to be Origin Trail. Origin track, Trail. T-R-A-C. Not the Oregon Trail, but the Origin Trail. <laughs> Not the Oregon Trail. <laughs> okay, so what was it? O-R-G-C? Uh, T-R-A-C. Sorry. T-R-A-C. Yep. Oh, I see it. And we'll just look at Coinbase. Okay. 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 All right. So let's just do a quick analysis on this, on the monthly time frame. So monthly looks great when you, you know, you dip, you pop, you put in a higher low pivot. Now we have a higher high. So really, you know, anything above 49 cents is really good. I know that's 50% lower from here, but you know, that's as long as like that's holding the long-term view is pretty good. What I'd like to see is it potentially go sideways for a few months and then break up, or maybe you get a little bit of a dip and then a pull up. You could buy high and sell higher though. If we go to like the weekly time frame, you know, that's pretty healthy. That's a healthy, normal drop. But after a really good pump, by the way, we do have a lot of topping wicks at about $1.30. So if you get above those topping wicks, you know, maybe you could see a little bit of an upside break. So $1.30, if it breaks above and holds, that can be an idea. Or if you just believe in it long-term, you can start dollar cost averaging every week, every month knowing that your risk is about, you know, as long as it holds above 50 cents, it's good to go. So, yeah. I really yeah, that's like my it. exact plan. That is that is pretty much my exact plan with this. I still think this has some room to move down just yeah. a little further given the Bitcoin sentiment, like currently, intraday. Um, I could see this dropping down to 80 cents. But obviously, as long as you can dollar cost average, sincerely, that is the best strategy for crypto. And it will keep you in the green even when things are going down yeah. you can continue to add to those things when they do go up or if they do go up i should say yeah then you'll be in a really really good position to then transfer that into other projects that you like and or you can just continue to ride it exactly i completely agree like especially if you're like you're not a professional market technician and you're like not like studying the markets every single day and looking for perfect entries dollar cost averaging you'll get a little bit on the way on the down days, you get a little bit on the up days and you start to build your wealth and your position over time. And then when the investment does play out, boom, you've got a solid position and it doesn't put um, your account at any, like it doesn't put your account at a lot of risk. If you just like, like if you just do like a lump sum, a large lump sum, you better have a really good entry. Otherwise you, you put your account at a lot of risk. It really removes the risk and smooths it out when you dollar cost average. So that was Trace, T-R-A-C. I love that one. Along with Link. So these are some nice altcoins aside from Bitcoin and Ethereum. I heard, Jake, that Ethereum is kind of like some like the bond market for cryptocurrency. So like the bond market for stocks, think of like low risk, low return, as long as interest rates remain stable because 
the bond values and the interest rates are inversely correlated. But when yeah. it comes to like Ethereum, people have kind of talked about it like being the bond market where it just pays high yields, but like kind of stabilizes. What are your thoughts on that? I would say I, I agree with that. I would think yeah. that Ethereum right now is in a really, really stable position in terms of maybe not price, but in terms of market share within the compute like network space. Okay. I don't think Ethereum is going anywhere. We've seen a lot of technology specifically built around AI, uh, graphical like processing. So like even rendering like movie scenes, rendering 3D images. Um, we've seen a lot of even just financial markets being built out on top of the Ethereum network on the layer twos. Okay. I don't, I don't see that going anywhere. And I think that it's just going to be a relatively stable kind of bond, like, um, asset kind of like you were saying. Okay, cool, cool. So that's, that's another alternative for those that want to, you know, just dip their feet into the crypto world and then they can expand from there. Cause Sometimes that's all people need is they just need like a, a safer route, a yep. safer type of like investment. Nothing's quote unquote perfectly safe, but safer relative to other cryptocurrencies. But yeah, that's cool. Okay. And I would, I, I just want to preface this by saying yeah. I do a lot of my trading on Coinbase. Yeah. I do use a bunch of different DEXs, but I do a lot of my trading on Coinbase and I mainly look at coins that are on Coinbase yeah, because it's Coinbase reputable. Coinbase isn't going to have any like sketchy shit on it right <laughs> yep there's so much kyc let alone uh general documentation the teams that get onto coinbase uh coinbase's exchange have to go through i trust that coinbase knows what they're doing when they're looking at projects if they didn't i don't think that that they'd be the market leader so i'm going to trust that coinbase has my best interest at in yeah. heart in terms of wanting to make a return off of me and my trades Therefore, they're going to put good projects on their uh, exchange. Yeah, so all definitely. the coins that I am. And, and they can't they can't about... screen everything perfectly, but it should have less risk than if it was just on some random exchange or just like of even course. think back on like FTX, like FTX fooled a lot of people. But, oh, you know, yeah. like at the time it was legit. So, you know, that that's just the risk with any really investment. You have to go with the data that you have and the information that you have. And yeah, it should be safer on Coinbase. Yeah, one second. Sorry, I just want to pull up my note. I, I want to, while you're doing that, I'm just going to quickly take a look at Ethereum ETH. That'd be great. Ethereum. And so Ethereum looking just like Bitcoin. Looks like I have some zones on here. So zones of our supply and demand areas where there's kind of like wiggles. There's areas of interest. So you can see... Demand, demand, and that is around Ethereum, you know, 143. Here we are in the weekly time frame. Big break up, holding higher low pivots, knocking on the door of all time highs. If we go to the daily time frame, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of like uh, keep an eye on this downtrend. This this uh, at least lower high. It's not exactly a downtrend. We have our high, low, lower high. Are we going to make a lower low? Or are we going to hold the higher low pivot right here at about 3,200? Um, Ethereum breaking above 3,682 could potentially warrant a buy signal. And that's, you know, it's got double confluence over there with the downtrend line and the flat top. And again, there, there needs more points. I need more points of contact to really call this a downtrend line. However, you know, I, I think it could be a valid downtrend line. It's it's not too steep. It's nice. It, it, it's 45 degrees. So we don't have any like decelerating trends or accelerating trends. I keep an I'm eye kind on of this right boat. here. But yeah. What's up, Jake? I was going to say, I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I, I do, these, do see this as a short-term Ethereum downtrend or just crypto downtrend in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my mother-in-law was was texting us, hey, should I buy Bitcoin? And that was like right at the peak. I was like, oh, Ooh. perfect signal. So, you know, sentiment. <laughs> I was going to say, that's how you know. When I start hearing normal people talk about crypto, that's when I start to cue into like, hey, maybe we're hitting like kind of not a market top per se, but a consolidation range where more people are starting to learn and we're coming towards a market top. Yeah. That's one of the big sentiments that I look towards. The second I hear normal people asking me, about cryptocurrency is the second that I start to think, 
hey, I should maybe start selling. Yeah, it instantly tr sell half the position <laughs> right there. Um, not not to throw my family members under the bus, but my dad, he, he called me like the day of Tesla's all time highs. Like, hey, can you buy me some Tesla stock? And I was like, dad, thank you for helping me make this decision. <laughs> Hang up and I <laughs> sold all my shares. <laughs> I posted on YouTube too. I thought it was funny. Um, e even my sister is starting to give stock advice, which is a big red flag. She's like <laughs> telling people you know, to, to buy like Meta and NVIDIA, which, you know, very well, well maybe okay investments, but it's just a sentiment signal. I, I agree with that. <laughs> I would say there's no way to tell at this point. NVIDIA is a wild, wild. Uh, it depends on your time it's the horizon. Wildest, like right? you know, if your if your time horizon is longer than three years, you know, you 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 probably are gonna make some money. I think there's safer ways to invest. There's yield maxes. You can get income from NVIDIA. You can you can even just buy like the Nasdaq. But it's prudent to you know wait for a little bit of a correction even, and that way you can really build that margin of profit over the long term. But it depends on your time horizon. The shorter your time horizon is, the more important your entry matters. The longer your time horizon, the less important the entry really matters. And you just have to remember as well that at the end of the day, you shouldn't probably get attached. My cat is playing with my webcam cord. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, you probably shouldn't get attached to like the cryptos or stocks that you're in. I would say that overall, you should look at it as numbers. It is numbers. It is money at the end of the day. And in that realm, you should be willing to say like, oh, hey, I made some money off of this. I can make money elsewhere. I'm going to continue to do that instead of like having my emotions come into play and keeping me in this when I'm going to either lose money and or have better opportunities elsewhere. I completely agree. That's really well said. It's, you know, there's so many ways to make money. You just want to get better at the skill of investing, the skill of trading. Um, these are just digits on a screen, like you said. These are just letters and numbers. Um, of course, there's real companies and real projects behind them, but you know things can change. And as long as you stay nimble and open-minded and don't attach your self-worth to either your wealth or your trading and investing decisions, you can live a happy life. But uh, that doesn't mean that we can't always improve and get better. You know, if you, if you do take some losses, mark down why. Um, if you did invest in a bad project or something, that's okay. You know, just learn from oh, it. Just learn absolutely. and adapt. So you're either going to make money or you're going to lose money, but you're going to learn a lesson. Those are the three outcomes or two outcomes. I, and frankly, I think that as long as you're not over the age of, say, 35 to 40 and you have... A, like you have a stable income. Mm -hmm. I would say that I personally liked losing more than I did winning. Interesting. Off of crypto. Tell me more about that. It, it taught me so much more about myself and what my issues were with investing mm. and gambling per se. Yeah. Um, and it really taught me how to control myself and kind of stick to a plan. Yeah. It really was plan formation. And once I started to realize like, hey, I know what I'm talking about. I need to trust myself, mm -hmm. let it play out and then move on because there will always be another mo another money making opportunity. Yeah. It's going to be OK. Like it, you don't have to catch the 100x perfectly. You don't have to catch every crypto that's moving 40 percent, 50 percent in a day. You don't have to trade in and out of things consistently. It's just small, consistent gains that start making large wealth. I really like that. I really like the way that you phrased that. That's really well said. Nice. Um, one thing that I just wanted to quick mention is yeah. that I would say that overall, and this is kind of off topic back to like Coinbase and Coinbase and exchanges, but the general population has proven that they're not going to jump directly in a cryptocurrency using things like MetaMask, using like these advanced developer portals, using these like basic console uh, or CLI based tools where you're using a console line interface to interact with a blockchain. That's just not how it's going to actually play out. Yeah. And for, in my opinion, for crypto to achieve this like worldwide adoption and acceptance, 
these centralized exchanges and collateralized payment systems that go against the core tenants or, or basic, basic principles, principles of cryptocurrency will help everyday fiat um, okay. come into the cryptocurrency space, not only as like these speculative assets, but as actual currency. Yeah. Um, so re really overall, my, my plans and my plays revolve around finding small cap fundamental plays that as a developer, I could look at their documents and say like, oh, I could build something on here. Or I could actually like see myself building something on here or see an existing project being poured into this. Um, but I yeah, like that. as for next up, did you want to look at uh, some more charts? Yeah, give me, give me your, your next one or two favorite cryptos. We don't have to go through all of them. You know, we got TRAC, we've got Link, of course, we've got um, potentially Ethereum and, of course, Bitcoin itself. But I'm liking Link so far the best based off its chart. That's looking good. Chain Link, especially if, Bro if BlackRock likes them. That's cool. So I'll hit you with, we'll do three more. And I'll do okay. some of the, like, big three that I think, I'll, I'll, I'll do, uh, yeah, I'll do three. Yeah. Um, so the first one I'm going to throw at you is called Render. It's R-N-D-R. R-N-D-R. Let's check it out. Render. R-N-D-R. I might have to look at this on Binance, right? It should be on Coinbase. Okay. Um, it might be... I'll just say... It render. might be Render the full word. Okay, okay render yep render usd yep okay cool and this should be the one that is at about 9 20 right here yeah yeah all right so i'm just going to quickly go on to the monthly chart monthly charts are straight up so not a lot of data so this looks like it's new brand new as of you know february um so that is the erc based coin of the render network i want to say it's been around since about 2020 okay. july of 2020 ish is this um, the correct one then it it's the exact same asset okay. try r n d r usd perhaps okay. should we try this one right here binance render USD? yeah that'll work too that should be fine okay yeah it looks like it looks the same but yeah it's it's populating a little bit more data now okay Still, I yeah. really like it. Dip and rip. So that tells us that buyers are in control. You have a little breakout over 269, another breakout over 505. So if we take a look at something like the weekly time frame, I see a lot of structure at about $5.20. So that can be a, a potential entry point, you know, to build or start a position. Otherwise, yeah, just as with most cryptocurrencies, you got a little bit of a short-term downtrend. Just keep an eye on how the structure unfolds. If we go to the, the daily time frame, um, going to be some resistance at about 10. That makes sense. That's psychological. And again, those topping wicks right here, the spinning tops, kind of like a little doji guy right over here. Um, if you get above 12 on an increase in volume, I like this. You can also plot a money flow index. And if you see a breakout on the money flow index indicator itself, that could be a, another buy signal. So a breakout on the money flow index, you just draw a trend line, mark your peaks, and you see a breakout there, that's a hint. And sometimes that can precede price action so you can get a better deal on the actual coin. But yeah, this looks like one that you can dollar cost average and accumulate. As long as it's above 350, longer term it looks good. I'd ideally like it to just stay above five. Um, there's also a little short term support at about 820. So that's just pretty much technicals and supports. Not too much to, to go over. I do like that money flow buy, though, if it breaks out on the money flow. I'll have to keep that in mind. That's a really, really good um, indicator. Yeah, it is. I, I really enjoy it. It's, the, it's the, my favorite indicator that I learned from the CMT curriculum and also the volume-weighted MACD. That really helps you um, get a feel for the oscillations. It gives buy signals, sell signals. It tells you the angle that the price might be moving at. So straight up versus just choppy. Um, it also gives you divergences and confirmations. And we do have, by the way, on 
This is rare, by the way, to see, but we do have bullish confirmation, mostly, uh, meaning money flow makes a higher high as price makes a higher high. That tells us that money is flowing into this even at high prices. That's confirming the uptrend. So whenever you see a momentum indicator make a higher high and price make a higher high, that is bullish. That just means you can buy dips within the uptrend. So you can throw in a moving average, buy dips within the uptrend. Um, but yeah, just watch that money flow. See if it breaks out. Boom, that's your buy signal. Not financial advice, but a technical buy signal, you know? The indicator yeah, told you course. to buy, not me. <laughs> um, no, I really, really like Render. It's a GTU it's mineable coin. It is distributed uh, graphics rendering on the blockchain. So we already know that there is an entire industry built around this. It's literally worth multi-hundred billions of dollars. So we know that there is industry practice for this uh, technological innovation specifically being used in businesses right now. Um, and we see that they could also compete with uh, the players like Microsoft, like Amazon, like uh, in uh, the companies that NVIDIA is selling to or AMD is selling to. Um, so I really like Render. As long as it's above five, I'm in the same boat. It's just an accumulation for me at this point. Um, yeah. I like it. Thank you so much for that one. I really like that one. I like that one a little bit better than track. I, I do. Render, I don't yeah. think render is going to go anywhere personally. Okay. Um, I think distributed GPU rendering is only going to keep growing because why would you want to go pay $40,000 to Amazon when you can pay like 6000 to render instead? Um, it doesn't make sense for businesses to not stay away or to stay away from this. I could see a lot of like uh, graphics rendering based businesses moving towards these blockchain services that allow you to buy up hundreds of or like thousands of GPUs for dirt cheap to be used because it's just a big network of people that are uh, saying you can use my GPU if you pay me a little bit. I love it. I love it. And especially if they can compete with the likes of Amazon there's huge growth opportunity. Even if they yeah. steal just a portion of the market share, that could be huge. Yep. It doesn't, they don't have to steal the entire Amazon business model, but yeah. Of course. I'm not yeah. saying Amazon is going anywhere. Any of these cryptos are gonna displace real business. I'm yeah. just saying that there's uh, a certain portion of market capital that's within these industries and that's up for the taking by whoever can make costs low. I so. love it. I love it. I love it a lot. That's, that's a huge one on the list. Um, the next one I will throw at you is going to be, let's do Aerodrome, Aerodrome Finance, A-E-R-O. A-E-R-O? Yes, sir. A-E-R-O. Aerodrome Finance, it shows up. Here we go. Oh, I've already charted this one out. Oh, this one looks sexy. <laughs> oh, I got this into this at so 18 cents. You've been in since 18 cents. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm going to sit in this till it literally hits 5 billion market that's, cap. I'm that's like gotta very be confident. Like what this trade point. of the year? <laughs> Breakout like over 12. Beautiful move. 18 impulse wave, by the way. So you, you break out. You get an increase. You break out of the opening range right here on the daily. You get an increase in volume right here. Volume increase. That tells us. Buyers are interested in this and it's confirming the breakout. It's telling you this breakout's probably going to get some legs. You have a nice, beautiful, healthy consolidation, which we're seeing with a lot of cryptos. So this is a nice little pennant. The, the pennant is, did form on a decrease in volume, which is bullish. And then we exit the flag. We didn't exit the pennant on a big increase in volume. Not a huge deal because price can go up on low volume, but it's just a little bit more dangerous. You have a nice flat top ad spot over 85 cents. And now we're consolidating yet again. So price wise, we look very, very bullish. Money flow is saying there's a little bit of a loss of momentum right now. And that just makes sense. It's gone up a lot. So maybe if it needs to cool off or back test, you know, 90 cents, that could be an entry point. Another entry Ooh, point could be somewhere, you know, in this little, this little zone right over here. Where can I get a... Where can I get a, here we go. It's probably over here, rectangle. 
So this whole zone right here is going to be kind of like the structure to risk off of. As long as it's holding above 28 cents, the long-term uptrend is intact. You got dip buys at 93. You just have a mild bearish divergence. So notice the money flow makes a lower high. So that just means there's less money chasing this higher high. And that's fine. It makes sense. It's gone up a lot. So that just means to wait for a little bit more oversold. But I really, really like Arrow USD. Do you have any thoughts? Any any other comments on that? Yeah. So this is a Coinbase cryptocurrency. Coinbase made uh, the base protocol. And Aerodrome is the automated market maker and liquidity provider or liquidity hub for base. Oh, so really? base is base is a layer two for Ethereum. So it scales Ethereum's transaction speeds and capabilities, okay. um, but still keeps the security. And Aerodrome basically is the liquidity providing hub for all of base. So everything Coinbase does on top of base, including the real world assets and tokenizations that they're working with BlackRock on, on top of anything else that's built on top of base, is going to be using Aerodrome. I think that this, to me, is my favorite project of the year, and it is by far my trade of the year, and I will continue to dollar cost average into this because of how much value it not only has on its ecosystem right now, but also how much value it will be providing in the future based on the current plans of Coinbase, not even um Not general market ethereum. sentiment that's or awesome ethereum, so this helps this helps ethereum well. like function well is basically what you're saying yes. it provides liquidity for base which is a layer for ethereum yes that's cool i really like also it have... i like the chart you have multiple buy entries this is a beautiful bullish uptrend just well if you're buying breakouts look for increases in volume if you want to buy a, a, an extended breakout let it break through on the money flow as well. Let it break through that um, short-term bearish divergence. But yeah, there's dip buys right there. Technically, this whole structure, this last flag on the daily time frame, that I, I personally would stop out underneath like 26, but that's if I didn't like believe in it long-term. And I don't even think it'll got, come underneath 26 cents when it's sitting at $1.47. That looks good. Yeah, and they have... $553 million in total value locked within their ecosystem, which just means people are either staking or locking their crypto as well as um, trading pairs into liquidity on their network. That is one of the highest total value locked to market capital ratio, um, market cap ratios within the DeFi space and within um automated market makers and liquidity providers just across crypto as a whole wait so and this is could you like a a repeat that or explain that more, more as in like um the amount of coins in supply are fixed uh, it's so, the best ratio as you were saying so there's a statistic called total value locked within DeFi. Okay. it just basically is the amount of money that people have taken in crypto trading pairs or within the actual circulating supply it depends on the actual protocol itself and how they implement the features but for aerobase and the total value locked there's 553 million dollars worth of aerodrome and a trading cryptocurrency pair so let's just say aerodrome and usd there is probably $300 million worth of Aerodrome and USD split in 150 to 150 or 50-50 ratio. Okay. And basically if somebody wants to take USD and trade to Aerodrome, you provide them the capital to do so and you get a small percentage of fees. So that total value locked is essentially saying there's $500 million worth of money on this ecosystem that is guaranteed to be locked up for a set amount of time to be utilized by people to trade between crypto pairs or to be utilized within liquidity um, on other protocols, as well as it allows you to vote on proposals within the um, the network itself. I like it. So this did sounds that explain like a really it? good one as well. Or did that help explain it? It's something it, I don't even completely understand because it really is. It did. I'm not. I'm not as much of an expert on system. you, so sometimes it just takes time for things to sink in, and then you do more research, and then 
you'll start to connect the synapses will start to fire off again and the wire together and then it'll make sense so i may not fully understand it today and that's okay but maybe in the future i definitely will and so and, and this cut ties into like the more that you understand an investment the better an investment it is for you so for something like this i wouldn't you know bet the farm on it obviously maybe i can dip my toes but as i understand more and more i can maybe allocate more capital to this altcoin i wanted to add to jake not a lot of people know this but you you were the first person to call out the gamestop squeeze i i, I yeah. you were the first person when we were live streaming you were the very first person to call out you were doing your research and you were all over reddit and you even posted the channel to, onto Reddit. And that actually really helped boost the channel because it happened to be like a top comment from you. So I just wanted to say thank you. And you were really on top of that. You, you're really good at finding these like abstract, weird like squeezes and like weird rare events that are about to happen in the market before anybody else knows. I would say that's my specialty above all else is yeah. finding smaller capitalized or smaller cap uh, stocks, cryptos, just general like industries and being able to value those at a correct rate compared to the rest of the market. Yeah. And also analyzing like trends from things like Reddit, Twitter, or X, I should say, um, Telegram. A lot of it is really just weeding out bullshit. Like yeah. I would like the one thing I've said to people is like, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. I've lost too much money on dumb crypto stuff at this point to fall for stupid crypto stuff. Yeah. It will have to be something really smart to get me. And therefore, because I've lost money on crypto before, because it isn't. A you've been through the market. battlegrounds already and you, you've come out yeah. alive though. You're here right now. Yeah, because Lessons. it isn't something, <laughs> because it isn't something that I actually like, or because it is something that I experienced, I have a good relative per perception of like, hey, this project is all buzzwords. I don't actually see them developing anything. They're just kind of spitting buzzwords at Like how long before this actually like dies? Or can they actually hit a capitulation point where they onboard enough people with hype that they have enough developers to like build out something? Yeah. Um, but overall, I think that that really is my specialty is finding these niche little small market cap cryptos that have great developer communities and also have great use cases within the blockchain and then being able to capitalize off that. Hell yeah, I like it. So did you have any uh, one last crypto or we have a really big list already, unless there's anything that you're passionate about or want to talk about? Any closing thoughts, words of wisdom for the audience? What's on your mind, Jake? I appreciate you um, being here. This is awesome. I think yeah, people are going to love this episode. They're going to love this podcast. Oh, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Anytime people want to talk about crypto or ask questions, feel free to... Uh, yeah, where can people contact you? What's the best way? Honestly, right now, I'm going to just throw my Discord ID at you. It's going to okay. be the best way of reaching me. Okay. Otherwise... I'll post that and um, pin that in the comments and the, the description. Otherwise, I'm going to be... Or I'm currently working on creating a website that will help people or kind of guide people into the correct realms of crypto investing. So small cap market coins that I think have good prospects. Um, okay. It really is going to be more like a blog site more than anything, but still, uh, if people would like to check into that in a little bit of time because I'm actively developing it right now. Yeah. Um, that'll be something that comes out. And then past that, I should be much more active on social media. I just haven't been, uh, focusing on social media yeah. as much yeah you know we got jobs we got careers we got coins to trade there's a lot going on i mean and i know you still trade the regular stock market occasionally too you know you know calls mm -hmm. puts you have investments so yeah i love it um i did i'll throw two really fast okay. at you two fast ones I've, for the road <laughs> yeah that i think are really really decent right, um so the out. first one is going to be the Rio network, Rio R I O. Okay, I think I've heard of this one. R I O. And would it just be USD or R I O? I believe so. R I O USD. 
Uh, yeah, that's what I got here. Do you see any of these tether? Or uh, yeah, it should be just the top one. It's fine. Okay. Does this look correct? Two twenty-eight. Yep. Okay. So first up, from what I see, this is bullish from the money flow. Notice how the money flow makes a higher high as price makes a higher high, and this is on the daily time frame. So each candle represents one day of price action. You do have rising volume on the green candles. You do have a bit of a volume spike right here after an extended move. So a big spike in volume after a big run can sometimes signal a top, sometimes at least um, a top in price for a short period of time where it can go sideways and then break up or just a little bit of a pullback before resuming the uptrend. Um, so far, the daily time frame looks pretty good. I want to take a look at the monthly as well. Monthly time frame looks good. Whenever you see a dip and then a V bounce, think Vs are good. Vs are good. V bounce, usually the, those signify higher prices over time. So that's good on the monthly time frame. On the weekly, beautiful breakout. I mean, uh, over a dollar seems simple and in hindsight, but you know, you buy over a dollar, you tripled your money. That's pretty good. So you yeah. look at the daily time frame. Yeah, I'll just keep an eye on this short term downtrend. And yeah, as long as, you know, I'm, I might wait. I might not buy the first break of the trend line. I do like a back test, a dip buy of about $1.22. So not, not too much on that. $1.22, there's a short-term support, of course, at $1.65. So that's kind of the structure that we're working with. But money flow is confirming the trend. Money is flowing into this, even at higher prices. Yeah, um, I uh, like 100% agree. I'm looking to buy this or dip by this. Anything below like 170, I'd be extremely happy about. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 170. If I can get under It looks like 170 to 120 is your like accumulation zone if you like it. Whenever you see a big breakup candle like this, that can be used as like a stop loss placement because if it comes beneath a breakup candle, it's basically telling you that that breakup candle really probably shouldn't have happened. But if that breakup candle holds, it's good to go. So hard stop loss would be like 80 cents. You wouldn't want it coming underneath 78 to 80 cents ever again. But that's a, a ways away. So we have support areas to, to buy. And um, I do want to kind of just quickly look at a weekly time frame. I do want to just do like a retracement. So you could do um, fib retracement and basically you just click at the low point, click at the high point, and you just kind of get a feel for areas of support. So yeah, if you want to give it a little bit more room, 70 cents would be a decent, you know, area to potentially risk off of. But yeah. And yeah, this is a really low market cap coin. It's worth $14.6 million. Okay. I know that the reason why volume spiked within the last week is solely because of RWAs or real world assets. Just the idea of bringing things like homes, cars, um, bonds, stocks onto the cryptocurrency like blockchain. Um, so I do know that volume spiked solely in this because it's a real world asset play, although it has legitimate businesses that it's working with and legitimate products. The second I see a website that are a cryptocurrency that has a website and one of their main like navigation bar tabs is their financial like quarters. I know that they, th legit, it's probably like, okay to look, invest in. We actually yeah. do stuff. <laughs> look, we do things. We release our quarterly financials. <laughs> I love it. When they're transparent about it, that's how I know like I can relatively trust my money in the project in the crypto space. Yeah. Trust being very, very like pertained to crypto trust. Mm -hmm. I should say, but, um, this is really good information, by the way. I love this. Thank you so much. Yeah. And the last one I'll throw at you. And I've been saying this for years. It's flux F L U X. You've been on this one for a while. We had a yeah. few conversations about this. And I do think that there's other projects that are similar to it, but I think it is in my opinion, the most core to my principles. So it's the one I like the most. I've also been in it for five years. I, I remember, I remember years ago, you talking about flux. This is good. Okay. So we got lower lows without a lot of follow through that kind of signifies a wedge. We're looking at the monthly time frame here. So each candle represents a month of price yep. action. 
You got a breakout over 72 cents. Very nice, clean move. Uh, if we go to the weekly time frame, weekly time frame, no huge red flags. Nice rising volume and rising price. That's very bullish. That tells you trends are likely to continue in the upwards direction. And I don't want to be, um, I'm not confirming any biases or anything. I'm literally just analyzing the charts. And so when looking at the daily time frame, we do have a not like red flags, just yellow flags. You have a lower high in the money flow, but a higher high in price. So that just means not a lot of money chased flux right at like a dollar seventy two. And that's okay. That makes sense, you know. The it just went from thirty cents to a dollar seventy. Money doesn't always have to chase higher prices. Um, you got a little bit of a breakdown and resistance at a dollar twenty seven. So that's gonna be an important spot to kind of break above and hold for the longer term picture. But the former breakout area is gonna be 70 cents. So 70 cents is a potential value area. And yeah, I would keep an eye, again, with most of these coins, this like short-term downtrend, look for a break above on the money flow and you could potentially get another buy signal. So break above there, break above $1.21, hold it as support. That's really good to go. Otherwise, you have your dip buy right there at about 71 cents, that former breakout area. I like it. Yeah. And one thing I want to just like throw out there for people is that like overall, you can look for these coins that pump really fast. Okay. But I don't think that's the smart thing to do. I look for companies, companies, I should say, cryptos or networks that are going to give me consistent long-term benefits either as a developer or their network is going to be giving long-term benefits to the developing market as a whole. So like Definitely. Flux, for example, not a crypto that I'm expecting to just go sky high and moon rocket. Yeah. Like, I'm not expecting this to jump to $5. Sometimes if, if it's just going straight up and just th with no pullbacks, sometimes that can just be the end of the move. You know, that, that can yeah. be you buying the top and then you just get dumped on. So if you're gonna like chase momentum or buy high and try and sell higher, just make sure you manage your risk, set key levels where you're gonna have stop losses at, maybe use a trailing stop. I don't know if you can do that. I don't think you can do that on Coinbase, but you can just set alerts and then manually trail it. Um, I know that Coinbase has gotten a lot more advanced though. They, they do have like active trader stuff. So you can use like stop limit orders and stuff because that's- They do have nice. a- as far as I know, they do have a trailing stop order too. Okay. Um, they've done a lot of work on their like real trading UI, I should say. Like yeah. they they listened to uh, traders, which is really really nice. Um, yeah, because I never with use the volatility and price swings. You kind of have to. Um, and and it, 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 crypto is known sometimes for its flash crashes. Sometimes they can start to do the stop hunt and they just go after them, and so. If you if you are going to be trading crypto, just you know use use stop orders. Maybe start with a wide stop just to give it some breathing room so it can wiggle. And then as structure forms, then you can raise your stop loss and trail it up. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just an, a, a good that, way. That's to just think a about fantastic it. strategy and a yeah. great way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I had any any other closing thing. thoughts, Jake? This is a really good session. So we've got Flux, we got RNDR, we got Rio, we got AERO, we got Aero, we got Link. This is some good stuff. Aside from just Bitcoin and Ethereum, like my boring ass. <laughs> I would say that um, kind of going on that like flash crash tangent to wrap things up. Yeah. Really just kind of identifying the cryptos that you think have a space in the industry to that you want to a either invest in but b more specifically if you want to trade do not be afraid to just take a little bit of profit yeah that's the one thing that burned me in the past mm. is just being greedy trying to hold for literally just 10 more percent or just 20 more percent on top of my gains and then it slowly just walks down from a high and then i'm sitting there like either at a buy-in price and or I'm sitting there at like my base level DCA for investing. And I'm like, I could have just made 20% and gotten in and out and moved this into a different crypto. Don't act as if 
you're going to miss a whole lot. And, and this is where it's really seven. helpful to just be in contact with us because you can be like, hey, Greg, where's the next resistance area? Are we at resistance? Does this have room to run? I'm not going to be perfect, but I have a, a pretty decent idea, short term, medium term, long term. And yeah, just, you know, trim some, you can sell half, maybe sell a quarter, sell a third, and then maybe set a break even stop. That's a common risk management technique that you know, it may not always be the best for maximizing profits, but it's good psychologically. When you take some off the table, boom, you get, you generate some cash flow, you, you get, got some liquidity, and then you let it ride, maybe with not the full size position, but with a decent amount. And then you don't really have as many regrets. And um, you, might you want to do that at areas of resistance, or if there's a bearish divergence, or if you just get like a ridiculous spike, like, yeah. Don't be, you can be a pig, but maybe not a hog. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say like, to be able to jump into crypto and nail the top or nail near the top is all luck. Yeah. Like you can say you're the best trader ever, but at the end of the day, it is all luck. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, you can't predict order flow consistently. So lock in some flow. profits. Yeah. Don't, don't be, don't be holding out hope for that million dollar moonshot where you're going to go from a thousand dollar crypto position to a fifty thousand dollar crypto position yeah what, what do you really think of just... the, the doge millionaire dude who had millions of dollars and everybody's like sell they're like shaking him he's like nah dude we, we're a movement <laughs> and it's like okay and, and uh could have i can't millions. say Even half I... just sell half <laughs> i can't say i would have done anything different uh, there, which you know. is really silly but if i was in his shoes that's I think I would pay off my debts is by and not lock selling. in a house. That's the thing. I would That's lock what gets in a house. you to that point. And then after that, the rest rides on Doge. But if I had that, I would probably just buy a home, make sure I'm set, and then let it ride. But yeah. <laughs> I, I do think it is silly, like even for myself, to not take as, as much profits as I should or yeah. take smaller profits. And, just and chunks. everybody's That's different. Like, different. like me personally, I, I don't, I actually tend to take profits too soon. I'll get a nice, I'll just get like a little pump. I'll take profits or half profits. What I've been doing to adapt to that is just like, I do option selling. I'll buy a hundred shares and sell covered calls. That way the market kind of takes me out, but I'm incentivized to hold to my profit target. So, you know, there's different strategies that you can use, but just know your personality. Like you get big gains because you have that, that desire, you're willing to hold for big gains and for big profits. Some people like me are may, maybe a little bit more risk averse. We might kind of just want to take the, the quick cash, get back into cash. Of course. Uh, cool, it's another win. And just you know adapt and do what's best for you. You have to know yourself over time. So if you're of a course, brand new trader, maybe just track your trades or paper trade, um, and then maybe do small size. And then as you're doing better and better, you can increase your trading size. Yeah, of course. The number one thing is just don't invest more than you are willing to lose, especially in cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah. Like every penny that I have in cryptocurrency is money that could evaporate. And yes, I would be sad, but it wouldn't change a goddamn thing about my life. Yeah, you wouldn't I be homeless. Bet, I don't bet my life on cryptocurrency. Your, your cat I just, behind like, you wouldn't would still get fed. <laughs> I don't know if these cryptos went down, they might not deserve food. They're kind of the ones powering Bitcoin right now. So they're the ones buying up Bitcoin by the dozens. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, Jake, but, this is a great podcast episode. Thank you so much for your time, for your knowledge. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. It was really, really fun. Yeah. We'll have to do it another time. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Peace. Peace out, everyone.